right, folks, welcome to Driftwood Guitars. My name is Chris. We have Matt over here today, and we're going to do another Professional Luthier reaction video. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did, uh, what, Taylor last time? Yep. So today we're going to do a, a Martin Factory tour. So the trick to these is finding a video on the interwebs that isn't like an hour and a half long with a bunch of interviews in it. Right, yeah, we uh, we looked at some Sweetwater ones, and I love Mitch Gallagher, obviously, but like, you know, we, it's, yeah, it's not really, we want to see the factory, we want to see how the yeah. sausage is made. We're not so much, and I, also want to I, find... don't really, I don't really care about the humans that make them, no, I'm just kidding, no, <laughs> I do, I do, but It's also yeah. nice to find a video of a person taking a tour, because I want to see how, like, the company presents what they're doing to somebody exactly. in the shop. So we have yeah. found uh, a Guitar World video, uh, Jared Dine's Martin Guitar Factory Tour. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of just quickly skimmed through it really, really fast. I've collectively maybe seen 60 seconds of this 10 and a half minute long video, but we're just gonna push play. Yeah, and, it looks uh, like that's what we're, uh, what we're, what we're checking boxes. Yeah, yeah. And so we're just gonna watch it and I will kind of point out what I, what I see. You know, it's interesting always to see how factory guitars are made versus uh, handmade guitars. And mm -hmm. I'm coming from a, fa a handmade world, obviously, as a luthier and uh, I'm excited to see what it looks like. I yeah. believe it or not, I've never actually watched any Martin Factory tour videos before. What are you expecting to see? Uh, I think Martin's going to be uh, more hands-on than Taylor was. Mm -hmm. Less less CNC machines. Uh, I'm, that's my, kind of the reputation. Yeah, yeah, and my my thing is always like, let's see what the spin looks like. That's that's what I wanted to see, really. Yeah, yeah. You know, what is that that they're trying to present to somebody? Yeah. So we'll see what she does. Okay, cool. cool. Sweet, you ready? Yep. Let's get started. So, this is very intense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very intense. That's true. From Martin Guitar, we're gonna take Jared on, on a tour of our factory. Hell yeah, let's do it. Jared has his own channel though, I think. Uh, I know yeah. him, so this I know is his our face. custom shop, uh -huh. so pretty much anything that isn't a standard production model is gonna be built here, whether it's different tone woods like uh, we have a, a maple dreadnought up there we don't build a lot of guitars with maple yeah uh i mean brazilian like in my mind guitar. i didn't think that the custom shop guitars that you would order would just be like stuck up on a shelf like that <laughs> like True. it's fine like your system's gotta work but i'm like oh my god they should be more protected than that so the guy <laughs> yeah. who just has a like, guitar strewn all over his shop i guess yeah <laughs> <laughs> But they seem like these are the guitars people have custom ordered. Guitars like that would come through the custom shop. Well, this is one of the models we built in collaboration with Orange County oh, Choppers. God. Okay. Wow. So they hmm. built a. Uh, I think I think that the guy's Jared's reaction was like, "Okay, wow, <laughs> that was pretty pretty spot on." Yeah. I get I get what they're going for. Obviously, they're collaborating like Orange County Choppers, but. If you're into ugly, we got you. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and I don't even want to, you know, listen, you like what you like. I, uh, what I like is just... That's hideous, Matt. Just say it. Just say it. Don't get to be nice. That's an ugly guitar. Yeah. I even, and I, I'm a, I would class myself as like someone who appreciates mechanics and mechanical things. Yeah. It's just no, that. That's, that's yeah. hideous. She's a guy. <laughs> and we built, I think we're building seven of these. Wow, that's gorgeous. that's amazing. That's gorgeous. It's not though. We really like to push the boundaries of what we can do with inlay. Sure, yeah. So down here is our inlay department. Look so as you can guitar. see, we have some examples of different types of inlay that we do. Okay. Really, if somebody thinks of it. Um, so you can see um, in the background here, he's got a laser cutter or a C, that's a small CNC. Mm -hmm. And just like, that's cool. It's just like a, a, he said the inlay department. So this is, seems to be like a station, somebody's job is yeah. just to do inlays for folks. And so they're cut on that CNC machine and then inlaid there. Cause it's cool, you can, if you're looking to do uh, inlay work using CNC, you can get away with a small desktop CNC machine, which saves a crap ton of money. And space. Uh, and yeah. space, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to see, cause Martin has really gone down a rabbit hole in the last decade of some really just, Oh, let's just say inlays for inlay sake sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. Uh, I know their commemorative guitars are, if if pause the video right now and go Google some of Martin's commemorative guitars because yeah. they, they are, um, uh, you know, very um, grandiose. Grandiose. Yeah. And the, the one-offs that they do will be hand-cut inlays on the whole guitar, like the number one millionth. Mm -hmm. And then they'll release like 10 versions of that guitar that are available for purchase. And those inlays will be cut on CNC. They're slightly scaled back. But... 
I am going to call a spade a spade. A lot of times if I see some of these ugly inlays that Martin's been doing lately, it's like, man, I don't understand it. Like, and this is coming from a guy who does crazy inlays. Yeah. But like my inlays, I tried to be more tasteful and I'm doing them specifically for a client. But some of these inlays that they're doing on there and they're doing them on parts of the guitar that affect the tone. Yeah. Like they're putting giant inlays on the, on the soundboard of the guitar. That's affecting the tone of the guitar. Yeah, it feels a little bit like a compromise. But I do think this is cool that it's still very uh, intimate inlay section yeah. in here. That we do. Okay. Really, if somebody thinks of it, you know, we, we, can, we can inlay. <laughs> also, bam, Emerald's getting a guitar. <laughs> it had to be said, it had to be said. <laughs> bam. I wonder if that is Emerald's. Emerald uh, Lagasse lives out here and has a couple of restaurants out here. But, yeah, yeah. or vacations at least, yeah. 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 Basically, yeah. So what we do with this inlay, it's a process called sand shading. Mm -hmm. So That's if you look, we have not a frying pan there okay. with the sand in it. And you do your little witch's spells in there? Yeah, and, and we burn the different hues into the wood okay. and then we inlay it into the top. Oh yeah. But that's not, Okay, so sand shading, he did, okay, so the way that that works, sand shading is a technique that I use. I think he didn't describe it very well in there. So you'll take like your little pieces of wood that you cut the shapes out of, like so like say one of those leaves yeah. on, on the, the the thorn of roses there, mm -hmm. or the, you know what the hell it's called. Uh, if you wanted to get the shading of the part where it connects to the actual, the stem of the thing, yeah. you'll actually just fill a little, little dish full of sand and put it on a heater and you heat it up and then you stick the piece of wood down inside of it and the deeper into the sand it goes, the hotter it is. So it actually scores oh. the wood like a brown, or you know, a, a charred color. Yeah. And you can get that nice shade. That's how you'll create things like the shading on a face or like it works really well on like flowers and stuff. This is really poorly done. Of course, it's much faster. Uh, but like, dude, like what is this? Yeah. That I mean, is going to severely affect the tone of that guitar and you're going to have issues with that many inlays on the top causing situations with cracking. Mm -hmm. If this is a custom order, I don't ever have a problem with somebody's personal taste on a custom order. Like yeah. that's super, like that's cool. That's kind of got like that 1940s, like uh, kind of Navy yeah. tattoo look yeah, to American it. American classic. Yeah. yeah. Like that's cool. But if that's a, f a mass produced look thing, I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. That's playing into the, that's a conversation that Matt and I have in another video that we just shot about reacting to mean comments. Yeah. And like, that's where this idea that if it's pretty, it must not sound good. Like it's gotta be both. Yeah, you can't you can't make yeah. that compromise. But I did want to comment on how they're doing that sand shading and what he's talking about. Yeah, there. that's I didn't I've never seen you do that. That's yeah. a really cool technique. Yeah. Even into the inside of the back, so when you look through the sound hole, there's inlay there and inlay on the okay. back of the guitar. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, Going some the of extra the more, mile. Yeah, it's not only are our uh, the people that work here gifted at building guitars, we need that. But yeah. they can also build parade Both. floats. <laughs> that was a parade float. Does it, Jen? <laughs> Does it shit? <laughs> a lot about Martin's tone, and yeah. one of the ways we get that tone is the way we brace guitars. This woman right here. Exactly. She's the tone master. Like, yep, we have the tone master Zoom here, shaping the braces, glass. galloping braces. <laughs> okay, don't, please don't feed yeah. the brace shapers. <laughs> and so this is an X-brace top. It's the perfect between tone and strength. Uh-huh. Because it gives it Okay, so... This is the part that I that I was I hoping that we would see at a, at a Martin uh, uh, tour is that what we talk about with like voicing a guitar hand voicing a guitar top like what they're doing is just shaping that's not voicing they're just kind of like knocking it down to the level that looks good right it's not the same as saying I'm going to intentionally take this particular brace down until it's musically happy that's just going this is the general shape yeah. Also, if you look there, I think we can see that standard classic yep. uh, Martin, um, Martin X brace where they're not joined super tightly. Yep. They're just Martin kind does of that on all their guitars, I believe. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not on their absolute custom shop ones. But if you're uh, into, you know, I yeah. spoke to a guy who works at Martin a couple of weeks ago about that, and we were talking about like he says all of our guitars, other than custom shop, are pre shaped braces, meaning that they already got like their the parabolic shape to them and right. all that stuff. So that means they're going to have that felt cover. He said our custom shop ones, we do shape by hand. Cool. Uh, they go on as just a chunk of wood, yeah. like, like how uh, most hand builders do it. But I, th I think they still have that fabric cover. But yeah, what you'll see here is she's not doing any sort of flex testing or feeling it to see if the guitar is happy. It's just taking it to a general shape. Yeah. The tape on the fingers. She looks like a bare knuckle boxer. I would not want to meet her. <laughs> I couldn't imagine shaping braces all day, boy. Yeah. Top enough strength to withhold the tension of strings, gotcha. but allows it to vibrate so you get a nice tone. Uh, okay. 
And yeah. the way they scallop the brace is, is with chisels like that. Gotcha. So, gotcha. you know, you have to be careful, you careful, know, what you're yeah. doing, because be, if not, you could go through a guitar top or probably through your finger. Yeah, and right. Either way, it wouldn't be good. This hallway illustrates what we That's do cool. in our machine room and in our sawmill. We process the raw wood that comes in. Right. So, so Martin, um, uh, different than Taylor here, those are one piece necks. And yeah. done and done on a bandsaw, the old school way, yeah. which is super cool. So you can see how much wasted wood there is to, to what Taylor was saying as far as saving wood. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You're using a giant chunk of mahogany here and only getting three pieces out of it with a lot of waste. Yeah. Here is a block of mahogany. And Shake we'll, out, uh, yep. Yeah, we're going to cut that basic profile on a bandsaw. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to go into one of our CNC routers. Okay. And then also the process fingerboards and bridges, uh, neck blocks. This is a piece of Sitka spruce. And it's actually two pieces that we're going to book match and then glue. So there's a seam in the middle. Okay. So they're doing that in our machine. Room. Gotcha. That's I love this board. That little yeah. We get a big like shop, we should get one of these. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll make one on the CNC machine. Get at it. Like $7,000. Hang on. Gotcha. That's probably worth like what? That little yeah, sliver. Like $7,000, somewhere around there, that piece of Brazilian. That piece of Brazilian wood is not worth seven thousand dollars. Get out of here, Martin! Like, <laughs> I mean, uh, if it came off someone's fam like a famous person's guitar, or if it, yeah, maybe, like, maybe it has Sides paperwork. So that's probably it, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's super thin. A that's maybe one and a half, two millimeters thick. That's probably like forty-two inches long. Uh, that's maybe if you were to sell that on eBay. Maybe three hundred dollars. <laughs> Buy it now. <laughs> not yeah. even a thousand dollars. Even close, like oh, yeah. seven thousand dollars. That's you know a bit much. You know a little, yeah. a little build it up and make it. You know they got to sell the Brazilian rosewood guitars. Either. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> now it was a whole now set. Now it's going to get a noisy. We're going to go, go take a look at our uh, machine room. So down wow. here on the left side we have our CNC routers. So going back along the, the uh, oh. yellow line. So that's, oh, that's so the cool. processing next. The processing. I just want to see the dust collector. Bridges. Uh, neck blocks. Now below it's us, a, it's we its have own separate building. What are called clamp carriers. <laughs> okay. Now these are used to glue the top and the backs together. More, More rotisseries. rotisseries. Yeah. What they're doing is they're rubbing glue in between the two pieces of wood, clamping them together, and by the time it rotates back around so to them, work. it can be sanded and then. Look at these system. These uh, like those are all back plates joined up. Yeah. That's something we saw at the Taylor video too. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to come up with some system like that. I wonder how old that machine is. Like, it, it looks... Super old. Yeah, it looks pretty industrial, pretty old, but... Brought okay. upstairs to be cut. Right, right. Here's a, a, a new robot that we have that delivers parts to different areas. Oh, that's like a la, <laughs> no. a la Amazon. Yeah. You know? they, <laughs> Thanks, Jeff Bezos. Yeah. <laughs> you did it! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's they funny. Can, they can like a Roomba put, for guitars? Yeah, they can put music on it and roll around playing different songs. Oh, yeah. These are our lasers. Now, this is what we use to cut the perimeters of the top of that side. Okay. So all you have to do is program the body shape into it. So I do that with my CNC machine, but eventually, cut, you know, whatever we need. We get a yeah. laser cutter to do that. Cool. It's just simple, easy. How many cut are they going to do in like yeah. an hour? I'm not sure how many they can laser in an hour. We build around oh 200 guitars here a day. So Jesus. Yeah. Uh, it's just weird to me, um, and, I, and it, it makes sense. You can either move your workpiece or move, but I, I, I don't understand what the decision was to make the. Workpiece move instead work of the cutting move. head. And this is what's interesting too, you'll see a lot on like five axis metal cutting CNC mm -hmm. machines, like the Haas machines, the same thing. The the spindle stays still yeah. and the part moves around it. It is, I don't know why. And to me that would take more space up though, right? Because you've got this huge base that you have to move around versus a tiny head. I, I, I guess, I, mean, I think in, it probably in some ways it, it's probably six in one, uh, half a dozen in the other. Only, only thing that I can think of in a practical sense is that um, because they're only that if that's purpose built for that and it's only going to be something that's flat and stationary um, If you're using a laser, maybe there's some sort of like either Like a, a cooling something to, to help keep yeah. it, uh, you know, like energy efficient there, There's there's got to be some sort of uh, I'm sure well, you know, it's an engineer made that there was yeah. some sort of a Well, if an engineer made it, it's probably overcomplicated. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> A day? A day. Wow. So you hear what they said 200 so this guitars a process a day. called candling and what we're doing is you're shining light through a piece of spruce just so you can see any imperfections in the top. And so you run along the light, see that spot right there. Yeah. 
So you're not going to want to use so, this piece of wood on, say, like a D45 or uh, a larger body. Yeah, called candlesticking. Uh, it comes from back in the old violin days. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd be carving a top um, by hand with no electricity. And that's how you could actually tell how thick a top was. You would use the lighting uh, of a window or a candle to mm -hmm. tell how thick the top was for the gradations. So if you got kind of a darker patch, you know that you needed to take it down a little further. Yeah, or in this case, what he's talking about here is you can actually see individual like pox inside the wood. Let's see, oh, maybe yeah. it looks good on this side, looks good on this side, but in the middle there's a void or a piece of sap. And you won't know that until it moves further down the assembly line process. Right. And now you've revealed this ugly mark. And so he's basically saying like, we only let our best wood go towards like our D45s, you know. The flagship. Yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah. It's cool. So what you can do is mm -hmm. take a form like this and see if it'll fit on a smaller guitar, which you can position it for an 014 fret. Or if for some reason it doesn't pass any of those uh, inspections, what we do is then we take it and use it for the center strip. So when you look down through the sound hole of one of our guitars, most of them you see the back that center strip with CF Martin and Company Nazareth BA on it. Yeah. Just because we like as little waste as possible. Waste not one yeah, we like to be... Uh, as eco-friendly as we can. I feel bad for this laptop. <laughs> <laughs> eh, a little dusty. <laughs> <laughs> that guy smokes. <laughs> yeah. So what they're gonna do is cut the channel that they need. So similar to, similar to my system, you can see there, they're using those indexing dial pins mm -hmm. on the sides. Uh, it's funny, because when I first started, um, building guitars years ago, I would see people using tabs, not always in those places, but I was like, what the hell are those for? Yeah, it's and like it was, Shrek ears. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now I totally get it, absolutely essential for uh, for mass producing. Yeah. And then inlay whatever the pattern is. Oh, gotcha. Right here we have a pot of hot hide, hide glue. glue. That's what we use for our, our authentic models because that's what they use back in the 30s, 40s, whenever the authentics are from. Nice, nice. The That's viscosity cool. of it changes throughout the day, so you have to really know what you're doing to be working with. I've never. Now, are we using hide glue on that, Chris? Yeah. It's a, it's a hide glue model. I've never actually used hide glue before, so it literally is the old take the horse to the glue factory kind of a thing. It's mm -hmm. hide glue. It's from horse hooves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you've got to heat it. It comes in like this. I've got a bag of it. It's like granular. Um, it almost looks like crushed up um, amber, like sap, tree sap. Cool, okay. Uh, turns out it's crushed up horse hooves. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you heat it up. <laughs> Sorry, Bessie. You have to, exactly. You have to keep it at a very specific temperature. Um, it sm I've heard it smells horrible. Yeah. Uh, well, and then you, if you've ever if you've ever smelled a horse hoof, if you ever smell like a horse hoof oh, yeah, in the wild, yeah. oh my god! Uh, my family used to have, and like whenever the farrier would come to clean them, it yeah, like raw sewage doesn't even come close to what that funk is that comes out of there. Yeah, you'd have to be there, <laughs> <laughs> not horsing around. <laughs> but you yeah. uh, why the long face? Because their feet stink. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> So you have to, it has to stay hot or the specific temperature mm -hmm. and then it, you apply it with a brush or a popsicle stick or something, but the work time on it is super fast. It's a positive and a negative. It, you have to, you can almost hand clamp things in place and then by the time that it cools off, it's already dry. Yeah. Um, but I, I just have no desire. I don't, I don't think there's, there's may, many better ways that you can improve the tone of a guitar than applying high glue. Yeah. Uh, especially with modern technology, but that's super cool that they're still using it on their authentic guitars, yeah. like doing it that way. That's, they could always just say that they're doing it and not do it, and so that's cool. Sure. Nice. In the custom shop, we still do a lot of hand shaping of Right, necks. right, right, right. So, I mean, if you want to give it a try, we can see if we can get so you some Mind you, we're in the custom shop here. Right. Something. This is clearly the high-end department. Hey, hey, Mike, how's it going? Yeah. yeah. And you're pulling it, work, work it knife over. That's cool. There's, they're still hand shaving the neck. I was using smoke shave. Out. Yeah. Get that nice grip on it. Yeah, this neck's pretty beat. Sometimes I make it look easy. Oh, he's gonna tear this up. I was gonna say, yeah. Probably takes a minute to do it. That's yeah. cool. How long does it usually take you to do a neck? About an hour. Really? It took off a lot. Of yeah. Because yeah, they're pretty, pretty so, aggressive. That's like a jig. I love that, that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really impressed with in the custom shop that they're still shaping the necks by hand. That's mm -hmm. super cool. Um, I don't, you're not getting that at Taylor for sure. Right. I don't think you're probably getting that. I don't even know if Gibson has an acoustic custom shop. I'm sure they do, but that's super cool. Yeah. I didn't expect to see this. The one thing I am noticing obviously right now, we are getting more of a curated tour of their higher end apartment. You know, we're not gonna see their their low, the DX line and things yeah. like that. And that's fine. I think that this is kind of what I really wanted to see too was like, the like a D18 and above, like mm -hmm. what is it that you're doing? Yeah. Uh, and I, 
That's super neat, carving the necks by hand, because, I mean, that's time-consuming. It is. It's very, like he said, about an hour a neck, and I know that I can knock out a neck uh, in about an hour as well, and it, for somebody who's just getting going, it takes hours, days. Sure, <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's give Matt a neck and have him carve it, it'll look like a, it'll look like a... Oh my god, first of all, yeah, it, it would look like a caveman did it, and also it would take, yeah. Uh, it, I mean, that, I, that needs to be a video. I'm here for it. <laughs> Matt messes up a neck? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I never did. Never had. No. He's an OG. He's a boss. Yeah, I never did. Yeah. Well, that thank you. Definitely yeah, stone. No that was cool. <laughs> right. So this is our side bending area. Okay. So what we're gonna do is, you get the side over from the laser after it's cut, uh -huh. and then we have these different presses that we use. Laser. Oh, okay. Mm. So it applies just the right amount of heat, just the right amount of pressure. Super cool. It's like a little baby, little baby guitar. If a piece of spruce isn't quite good enough for a top, we're going to use it for center strips like this. So you look Laser down cutter. through the sound hole, you see yeah. CF Martin and Company Nazareth PA. Nice. So now what they'll do on those. We use lasers, we use CNC machinery, but when it comes to gluing in the ribbon. You just hold them on there. Yeah, we, we haven't found anything better than clothespins. Yeah, so what they do on the those, uh, your back strip, the brace, the, the, um, the grain runs perpendicular to the, the right. normal way. So they'll take all those defect tops, flip them on their side oh, and okay. do that. What's well, super cool yeah. that I've seen in this video so far is there's so many things that they're doing that I on my own came to over the years. Like I started doing that years ago where I was like, oh man, I don't, I was paying like five bucks a strip for those back straps. And then I was yeah. like, man, I could just take scrap tops and do that. So I started doing that. They're pre-cutting their tops using a laser mm -hmm. and they're pre-cutting their sides using laser. Well, I started doing that a while ago too. Like just getting the general dimensioning done. And it's like, so far this is the closest we've seen for a factory kind of doing it the way that I do it other than the voicing part. Yeah, I, I would actually, I would make the assertion now, I've, we haven't seen this video all the way through, but you know, uh, I would make the assertion now that except for maybe the bracing, this is a, a in their custom shop, it's about as close as you could actually say to a handmade guitar sure. from, and it, you know, there's from a big manufacturer. Yeah, from a big manufacturer, yeah. And also, you know, I mean, we, we can sit here all day and 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 people will argue, well, it's not handmade of blah or blah, sure. but this is, yeah, this there this is the most craftsmanship I've seen in any yeah. of these videos. And I don't, I haven't shopped for a custom shop, Martin, like on their website, but I, you're, still, you're definitely into it for less than ten grand, I'm sure. Unless you're yeah. going Brazilian rosewood and things, and that's pretty dang good. Yeah, uh, or or a, a, a you know a custom inlay that takes up half your soundboard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. these were like CF Martin seniors looking at that's the ages. That's what I'm Paper clips, close <laughs> close yeah, That's what you're saying. From his wife got into trouble, but I need those. <laughs> that's bizarre. Now after we have the top and back glued on, the body's going to come down here to our phrasing department. Our what? So what they're doing is they're cutting the Finding. channels in for the inlay. Finding. Throw at it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a skill set that you develop. <laughs> Watch. I saw this clip by accident. Are you recording this? That's awesome, because your zipper is totally down. <laughs> <laughs> I got to catch that. I you. love it. <laughs> also, doesn't fix it, just like, yeah, I'm gonna let it ride. There you go. Come on, dude, fix it. <laughs> Now this is the binding area. After the channels are cut in the phrasing department, we're gonna glue the binding what in. What am I called the this phrasing department? This is our department. area. So. I wish I would have shown more of the binding department because there's a lot of work there that is hard to get around. Even on the Taylor video we saw it. So you lay your, like we just cut the binding channels on this guitar here and then we'll glue the binding in, but then you have to get all that back level again. Mm -hmm. And that's time intensive. And it looked like they're still doing all that the old school way there. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know ways that you automate exactly that. Exactly that here. This is our fret press. Has about a thousand pounds of pressure and seats all the frets at one time. Oh, and one all we time? need to do is trim up, trim the uh, edges, put a nice bevel on there so you're not you know, poking yourself in the hand when you're playing. How many accidents wow. have you had in this facility? I don't know. <laughs> do you have no, one of those little... <laughs> oh, he knows, he just doesn't want to say. <laughs> He's like, we had one yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Mary's Girl, not with us no, anymore. No. <laughs> she took it's her retirement early. It's safe to work here. And yeah. it, as you can see, we have about 26,000 visitors here a year that take their our factory tour. Okay, okay. And we want to make sure we're clean question. for them. How many people? Yeah. Here. We want to make sure everything's clean for them and then for the people that work here too. Right, right, right. All of these booths have a vacuum suction that, when they're sanding, sucks cool. all of that dust away from them into our dust collection system that is throughout our factory. Oh, that's so if you come neat. around the corner, after pre-finished sanding is done. 
body and neck come to our filling area. Mm. And so we, on the majority of our models, we use a lacquer finish. Mm -hmm. And if you don't fill the wood, because wood's porous, a lot it's just going to sink. What's they're yeah. doing here? So we yeah. make sure we fill it, and then you know they apply the filler. Uh, I hate the fill port Taylor Martin uses. It's like this brown paste. It's like wood putty. I hate it. It's the worst. It's just the worst. <laughs> well, tell us how you really it. It works for them, <laughs> but like, ugh. It's kind of how they get that look on their neck, so that Martin look. It's like this dark brown paste that stains everything, and they spread it in. Uh, and so they, their mahogany necks end up like like really homogenous, dark brown. Right. Uh, I mean, as long as it works for them, but if you're doing, back when I was doing repair work, when you're doing repairs, uh -huh. and you've got a kind of color match, you have to use that stuff. It's just, it's terrible. Uh, it yeah. works, it's, whatever works for them, it's clearly working. Yeah. Uh, but to, I'm still amazed at how many, like, they're doing all the detail sanding by hand, and that's yeah. just super cool. And then when you apply your finish, then it's nice and level, nice and smooth. So how do you deal cool. with, uh, like, having all the wood, you know, moisture different levels and, like, you know, shrinking and stuff like that? How do you deal with that, say, to make sure everything fits perfectly when you combine them? Well, one thing we do is we have an acclimating room downstairs okay, so yeah we season our wood there we try to bring it all down to about seven percent moisture content okay. before we build gotcha. so these are some inspection areas because when we're spraying the finish we want to make sure between yeah. coats things like that that you know it's, it looks good, good. yeah it's like the employees are used to being stared at behind glass yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 tens of thousands of visitors every year yeah we, you know, definitely want to deliver that yeah when do we get to make our float? Because I really want one of those. <laughs> Seriously, though. Are we getting an ad? What are we... Is this? That's oh, it. That's that was it. it. And then we're out. Okay. Well, I think that was a nice abbreviated tour. I feel like we didn't get to see a whole lot. We'll definitely do more Martin tour videos, I think. But... Yeah, if there are more out there that exist yeah. that are, uh, you know... Um, yeah. I think... Uh, my perception of Martin has changed some, somewhat from that. Um, I, I, I think what's kind of cool is uh, most guitar builders, especially who've been doing it as long as me, got a really good. Most of them have probably been to the Martin factory, but uh, that was way more uh, uh, the old school way of doing things than I expected. I don't. I think that mostly what we saw there was the custom shop, though. It absolutely was, and that was this felt. Um, it felt very curated. Very like curated. I feel like there were a couple of doors that were shut where if we. If we've uh -huh. gone behind those, because yeah. obviously we, this is just the tour that all the people see, and so it's it's sure. very much the yeah. So, but but with that said, th it's nice to know that you can get a, a guitar that is really built correctly and yeah. it's a high quality, and there's a reason those guitars probably sound a lot better. Um, so I don't want to assume that there are shady things being done in other rooms. Uh, just no. to know that that's how those high end guitars are built. I want to try to find a video down the road to like how the how, the, how the factory like the super just turn and burn guitars are built but yeah those uh, i've played some of their turn and burn guitars before not as impressive and we did the the breakdown the obviously. X, yeah was that triple o x2 was what yeah. that was and that mm -hmm. was kind of a piece yeah uh, <laughs> have but, you bent your plastic yeah uh -huh. <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah <laughs> oh my god if we ever do the tour it'd be like question in the back yes yes hi um where is your uh where's your four mica guitar <laughs> exactly. station at <laughs> you guys like just get old countertops and yeah. make uh make the sides out of those vintage countertops yeah, yeah rustic yeah bespoke Oh, <laughs> but that was cool. I didn't have a whole lot of outrage there. Uh, I've also yeah. was excited to see a, a lot of what they were doing there. Yeah, well done, um, Mark. The guy never zipped up his fly, which is cool too. I guess just let it all hang out, man. He's on a list somewhere now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, you can't go within two hundred feet of a school, but you can still go to the Martin factory. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour video. Uh, it's just a fun way for us to kind of uh, to to com compare and contrast and. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll put a link to the original video down there in case you think that we talked and stopped too much. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate you guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Later. <laughs>